tune tells us about all of the instruments of the orchestra. There are four different families. Strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion. Who remembers? What was the family we talked about last week? Who remembers? What was the family? Can you name an instrument we talked about last week? Anybody? Uh, Sam, go ahead. It's from the brass family. Yes, it is. We did the brass family last week. Who can name a brass instrument? There were four of them, actually five that we talked about. Uh, Skylar, do you remember any of them? There was a trumpet. Trumpet was one, had the buttons on the top. Lila was another one. French horn. Yep, that was very curvy, and you sort of play it this way, and there's three uh, valves to play that too. Uh, Molly, what else? Trombone. Trombone's the one that had the slide, right? And what else? Anybody else remember? Some? No? Really? Nobody remembers the tuba and the baritone? Yeah. Oh, Sam? I was just about to say, I remember the baritone and tuba. Awesome. Very good. Those are the ones. Um, and the baritone is the one that you can play when you're just beginning and starting, okay? I want to see your faces, everybody. So brass we learned about last week. The strings were um, not particularly going to talk about this year. I think we ha have gone over them like in third and fourth grade. But today we're going to talk about woodwind and percussion, the other two families. So we have a lot to cover rather quickly. So everybody watch and pay attention. These are the woodwind instruments that you would find in the orchestra. Um, the main two are the flute, that's this one, and the clarinet. Um, they are different than the brass. One thing that was specific about brass was that mouthpiece that was like a little cup. And remember all the teachers were talking about how you buzz like this. The mouthpiece. Um, these instruments, you don't buzz like that. You blow. Um, the piccolo is this one, very much like the flute. And the oboe and the bassoon have um, a little bit different mouthpieces, but they're considered woodwind too. Let me show you some close-up pictures. We'll start with the piccolo. Here's a picture. You will see it has a lot of keys, which is already different from the brass, who only had three buttons, right? Um, the lip plate is here. Embouchure hole means that's where you blow. And you'll see a video, but you put your lip against that lip plate and you blow across the hole. A nice focused stream of air. And that's how you make sound on the piccolo and the flute. The flute is the same thing pretty much, except it's much longer. The piccolo plays really high. It's so short. 
Um, you would play, if you joined band and wanted to play a woodwind, you could play the flute. Piccolo is something you would learn later, okay? But lots of keys, it has that little lip plate there too. The clarinet is also something that you could start in fifth grade. It has a different mouthpiece. This sort of yellowish thing here is a very thin piece of wood that's called a reed. And when you blow into the mouthpiece, that reed vibrates and that creates a sound. It goes through the long tube, out the bell. And there's a lot of different keys that you press down to change the notes. So that's the clarinet. Some people ask about the saxophone. The saxophone is metal. It looks like a brass instrument, right? But it's not. And the reason why is because of the mouthpiece on a saxophone. It's not like those other brass ones where you gotta go <laughs> like that. Um, the saxophone mouthpiece is actually a lot like the clarinet one. They have a reed like this. Okay, Lila, did you wanna say something about that? Did you forget? Okay, that's fine. Um, so you're not gonna see the saxophone in these pictures here because um, these instruments are from the orchestra. And usually you don't find a saxophone in an orchestra. You might see it in a concert band or a jazz band, okay? But the clarinet you will see in an orchestra. The bass clarinet is much like the clarinet, same mouth, kind of mouthpiece with a reed. It's just longer curved at the bottom and the top actually. So it plays lower because it's longer. So those two have a single reed is what we call it. The oboe has a double reed. It's very thin. It's the whole mouthpiece is that reed. I know a lot of people think it looks like a clarinet, but it's a little different because of that. Um, usually you don't start out on an oboe because it's a little harder to play. Same with the bassoon. It has a double reed, that's what this is. And um, these are just views showing you the front and the back. The keys are also spread out pretty much on a bassoon, which would make it hard to reach if your hands are small. So. If you wanted to play woodwind and beginning band, flute or clarinet is what you would start on. And then you could, as you get older, play one of the other ones too. Okay. So we have a couple videos. Mrs. Demore is gonna show you the flute. Take a listen. My name is Mrs. Demore and I'm one of the band teachers here in Downers Grove 58. If you go to school at Highland Hillcrest, Lester or Whittier, you've probably seen me around with the fifth and sixth grade. Well, I'm gonna talk just about the flute today, which has three parts to it. Here's our head joint where we're going to be making the sound out of. And then a body joint and a foot joint. We're going to go together. So this is head joint. There's a little hole in it. And as you start to listen to the rest of these instrument videos, you're going to see that most instruments make a sound um, by either putting a reed into your mouth or blowing straight into a mouthpiece. But with this head joint, we're actually going to be blowing most of our air over the joint and just a little bit of it's actually gonna be going into that flute. So if you've ever taken a root beer bottle before and blown over the top of it and gotten that really cool hollow sound, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing with this. So here's what the flute head joint sounds like. Kind of funny without the rest of the flute attached, but it can also make a high and a low sound. So to get this high sound, I'm gonna use really cold and fast air. And now a low sound with warm air. So there's a couple different sounds you can make on the head joint. And once I put it all together, I'm gonna hear pretty flute sounds. What I'm gonna play for you first is just a scale to show you that the flute can play up high and then down low. So here's a scale. Harry Potter theme with some of those lower notes. And I'd like to play 
the marks on the nutcracker for you as well. We're just gonna show off some of those higher up boots. anyone have a question about the flute or a comment to make anybody has anyone ever taken a bottle like a root beer bottle or a coke or pepsi or something where you could blow across the the um top of it and then you could hear some sound vibration that's how you play the flute okay next is the clarinet let's listen to uh squidward doesn't Squidward play the clarinet? Maybe he could teach you. No? No, Mrs. Kaminsky's here. Hi, friends. I'm, I'm Mrs. Kaminsky. I'm one of the band teachers in District 58. I teach at Fairmount Indian Trail and El Sierra Schools, and I'm also the band director at O'Neill. This is one of our woodwind instruments. It's called the clarinet. And the clarinet happens to be an upper woodwind instrument, which just means that it kind of specializes in upper or higher notes. It's also a reed instrument. So this little piece that I'm holding right here is called the reed. It's a very skinny, delicate piece of wood. And it attaches to the top of my clarinet up here on the mouthpiece. And then when I form an embouchure, which is just a fancy word for what my face is going to do when it interacts with the clarinet, when I form an embouchure around the mouthpiece and blow air through it, that reed is going to vibrate. Um, pausing for a minute. Taylor, did you have a question? That last song, was that, wasn't that from um, the Nutcrackers? Yes, that Mrs. Demore played on the flute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Good job. I like that. I have to watch it every year because my cousin does the ballet thing. Oh, cool. That's always fun. Yes, you're right. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, and you can't really see it happening because it's happening inside my mouth. But that's how the sound starts on a clarinet. <laughs>
sing that tune. Who knows what tune that was we just heard? Claire, go ahead. Um, isn't it from Toy Story? It was from Toy Story. Anybody know the name of the song? It was from Toy Story. Taylor, go ahead. You got a friend in me. Yeah, you've got a friend in me. It's not a good song. And it sounds really nice on the clarinet, I think. So any questions about woodwinds from anybody? Nope. I'm not seeing any hands. Amen, Charlie, Olivia, you guys have any questions? Skylar? No? Okay. Good. Let's go to percussion. The percussion family is pretty awesome. Um, we are going to go to a song that actually is really catchy. It will help you remember that percussion instruments are instruments you hit with your hand, with a stick, or a mallet. And you guys know what mallets are. Um, so you can hit it, or it could be one that you shake, or one that you